So apart from the names, what are the main differences we should be looking at in Chenin Blanc? Okay, well, Chenin is a very fun... <laughs> I don't know why I'm fine. We have to find a new leader. We have to find a new leader because every time you ask me the question, I laugh. You have to find a new way to say this. It's an episode about Chenin Blanc. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of Boozy and the Beast, How to Drink Better and Happy Chenin Blanc Day. Now, I didn't read the email Libby sent me about this scrape, so I'm fascinated to find out a little <laughs> bit more. Could you please fill me in? So Chenin is grown all over the world, but it's predominantly known for two regions, Loire Valley in France and South Africa. Now in the Loire Valley, I mean, it was, it was thought to originate, I think in the 9th century in the region of Anjou, sorry for any pronunciation, then spread pronunciation. to... Pronunciation. Pronunciation. Oh, wow. Um, it then spread through terrain into the Loire, rest of the Loire Valley, um, probably around the 15th century. Okay. Does that sound okay? I think so. We can't change it now. It's over 500 years ago. Oh dear. It was also one of the first vine cuttings to arrive in South Africa in 1655, where it was actually called Steen. Nowadays, actually, if you go to South Africa, it's generally called Chenin Blanc, but it can be referred to as Steen as well. And in a previous episode, when we talked about how to read a wine label, we said how in some of the old world countries, like France, a wine is referred to by its region rather than by its grape, which means that Chenin Blanc is known by other names. And it also means that as my pronunciation is terrible, and Robin used to be a professional rugby player in France, he is going to say the names of where this grape is from and what it sounds like. So I'm glad I could be of some use today, Libby. So you're looking at Vouvray, uh, Garde de Chaume, Bonazo and Savagnier, I think it was. And actually Cremant de Loire is also a sparkling Chenin Blanc as well. So apart from the names, what are the main differences? Well, Chenin Blanc, a bit like Chardonnay, is a very versatile grape and it really changes depending on where it's grown, what kind of soil and what kind of climate. So in France, which is a cooler climate, the Loire Valley, you've got a lot more of that high acidity in the grape, you've got a lot more of the citrus, the green fruit notes, the orchard fruits, so things like apples and pears, and a little bit of light honeysuckle blossom. It does depend on the region how the wine is made though. Um, Savagnier. Savagnier. Uh, it's only ever made in the dry style. Whereas Vouvray can be made dry, it can be made semi-sweet, it can be made it can be really quite sweet. This is a demi-sec here. I did buy the wrong one. You did fair. buy the wrong one, but it's all educational. We don't waste anything on this programme. We certainly <laughs> don't. So that be slightly, slightly sweeter. And it can actually, um, it's very susceptible to botrytis, or otherwise known as noble rot, which is what we've talked about in the dessert wine episodes already. But in certain areas, it can also make a really thick, gorgeous, sweet, gingery, sort of quincy flavoured dessert wine as well. Whereas in South Africa, which is going to be a warmer climate, you'll get more of those stone fruits, so more peaches, more nectarines and some tropical notes as well, pineapples and mangoes and things like that. Most South African producers produce um, Chenin Blanc as a dry style, but some of them do do the, the straw wine, that sort of sweet dessert style. And actually, a bit like the Cremant de Loire, the sparkling in France, it is often used for MCC. And here, I have one of my faves here, Sparkle Horse. Ooh. This is uh, by Ken Forrester. It's a sort of self-proclaimed, because Chenin Blanc is the grape of South Africa. It's the most widely planted grape. Ken Forrester sort of self-proclaimed um, the king of Chenin, essentially. Um, and this is a sparkling MCC made traditional uh, champagne style, fully Chenin Blanc. It's actually absolutely fantastic. Everyone I know in the wine world loves it. So well this outside of sparkle it. horse sounds like the ideal wine to be drinking during Pride Month as well. <laughs> You're right! It is. Everyone, crack yeah. out a bottle of your sparkle Re horse. Regardless of your persuasion. If you ever see the iconic bottle um, FMC, it doesn't say on the label what it's for, but I was, I've was i been told on good authority from someone who knows, knows a man who knows a man. No, knows not Ken, me. Not you. No, no. Knows Ken Forrester that actually it stands for fucking marvellous Shenin. So he really isn't humble about the fact he does Shenin Blanc exceptionally well. So look for a Ken Forrester from South Africa if you are buying New World. Now you can also get it in California, other regions, and there they, they tend to, they can age a Shenin Blanc in oak. They can do malolactic fermentation where they take it, the, t 
tart acid and make it sort of creamier. So you can get some of those nutty, brioche toasty notes within a Chenin Blanc in some of the warmer New World regions because of what they've done to the wine. Shall we, shall we give this a whirl? Let's try the South African. Well, that's quite nice. You still get the sort of apple notes that you find in the French stuff, but there's definitely that sort of peachiness and honey honey flavour that you did mention, so yeah. It's got more rounded texture generally than that. It's still got the refreshing acidity, I feel, but it, but it has more of those stone fruit notes rather than the, the apple and the light blossom notes of a, of a Loire Valley. That could be another good summer choice. Well okay. done, Bruce, again. And now, now shall we drink, now shall we drink uh, the, wrong the, wine. the incorrect wine? So this is the Demi Sec Vouvray, so that is going to be uh, a sweeter version of Chenin from the Vouvray region. Cheers. Even in the demi-sec version, the sweet version, you've still got that biting acidity, that refreshing lemon and, and greenness. It's just got a lot more of the residual sugar in there as well. So do you prefer the Bruce Jack or the demi more? <laughs> it took me a beat. It took me a beat, but that was good. That was actually really good. Do you know what? Everyone who sort of follows my, my Instagram knows that I tend to be a South African wine fan, and I still am, but I think that both of these wines have their place. I think they are both incredible, incredible um, versions of the same grape from completely different parts of the world. So basically, whatever your palate likes, be it sparkling, be it still, be it sweet, be it dry, be it ripe, or be it acidic, there is a Chenin for you. So happy Chenin Blanc Day. Cheers. Oh, double fisting. Cheers. <laughs>